Hello and welcome. Today we look at this past examination question that deals with the prescribed practical of osmolarity. A student presented data from an investigation into the osmolarity of potato using the graph below. So this graph is what you would generate after you have conducted the experiment shown in this video and to access that video you can click on the card above right here to access uh, two videos actually that explain the background uh, to this osmolarity lab and um, give you a sample of the data collection. So a student carried out a very similar investigation and their graph looked something like this. Estimate the osmolarity of the plant tissue in moles per dm cube. Well, to get the answer to that, you'd have to look at the graphical data and consider where the graph intersects this x-axis because that represents the molarity or the concentration that corresponds to a 0% change in mass. A 0% percent change in mass means that the osmotic concentration of the inside of the potato is the same as the surrounding solution. Both are said to be isotonic at this particular point here, which is a little bit less than 0 0.3. But you have to be careful about how you measure this, because in the IB exam, you are going to be allowed to have your ruler and when you put your ruler down between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 you'd realize the answer looks like it's around 0 0.27 to 0 0.28 putting down 0 0.3 would not be correct because it's obvious that the line is intersecting before 0 0.3 and being very careful about this and trying to be as close as possible to the actual answer would help you to score the one mark as opposed to zero. And you could very much feel hard done by the IB's mark scheme if you don't pay attention to this. The answer is less than 0 0.3. It might be close. Looks like about 0 0.27, 0 0.28. And that is where you would be getting your credit. You can't afford to vary too much from the true answer as the tolerance in these graphical type questions tends to be very strict. So that's the osmolarity. The second question that you're going to answer for this is identify which part of the graph represents samples measured in hypotonic solution and explain your reasons. So. The reasons for that have to do with when the potato takes up water as opposed to when it loses water. Hypotonic solution is one that is weaker, containing more water. It's more dilute than the solution inside of the potato. So the process of osmosis happens and water moves from where you have relatively more water molecules or solvent molecules across the semi-permeable membrane and into the potato cells, leading to an increase in mass. So this triangle here, this entire area here, represents where you have concentrations that are hypotonic. So anything that's less than about 0 0.28 or so down to pure distilled water that's hypotonic. These are very dilute. They're actually more dilute than the potato tissue. So water is going to leave that area and enter into the potato. And here on this side, these solutions are hypertonic in relation to the potato's concentration. So first you identify and then you give a brief explanation. Then state three possible sources of error when collecting data during this experiment. Well, to remind yourself of the experiment, like I said, 
you can click on the card above. There are many sources of error to consider for this experiment. And as we look at the answers for all of this, as given by IB, you will see that the range for number 1 is 0 0.27 to 0 0.29, deliberately not giving any credit for 0 0.30, which is obviously not the concentration. The answer is also given in osmoles, which is double the molarity, because osmoles can be found by doubling the molarity, uh, because you have 0 0.28 moles per dm cube, but you've got two ions in solution, sodium and chloride and that's multiplied by two that is not necessary you can get your answer your full mark by putting your answer in moles per dm cube the second part uh, is about the top part of the graph 0 to 0 0.28 like i mentioned and of course the third answer all of the controlled variables very important to consider and three of them out of this list would suffice too few samples weighed, not dried before weighing, samples from different sources, not cut all the same way, temperature of each sample not the same, potatoes not left at the same time in solutions, errors due to the limitation of apparatus and equipment. Now all of these are valid sources of uncertainty in this experiment and it's for you to take note of it. Um, in our conduct of the experiment, as shown on our video, we did take all of the samples from a similar batch of potatoes. We did keep them at the same temperature. Um, we did make an effort to cut all of the potatoes to the same length and to sap all of them in a paper towel. But there are some valid sources of uncertainty. Uh, the major one being that there might be some slight differences in size depending on the part of the potato or which potato one came from, even though they're from the same batch, that could lead to some variation. And also, when we roll the potato over the paper towel to dry it, each one might be dried to a slightly different extent. Of course, uh, we carried out three trials that you can always carry out more, up to 10 trials, so that when you carry out up to 10 trials, then your error bars could be based on standard deviation and uh, you could have a lot more confidence in your final answer.